Hey y'all, this is Cliff with the Dusty Cliffs, and we are back today with some more projects that we're working on. Uh, the last few videos I did, I was actually at home on quarantine because I did test positive. So if you look at those videos, you can tell I wasn't feeling very good. I wasn't my normal happy self. But anyway, let's get into what we're doing. We're going to be looking at an old shotgun that uh, a lot of us might feel a little partial to because one of these is the very first shotgun that I ever owned. It was a New England Firearm Partner 20 gauge. And when this thing was brought to me, you couldn't even tell it was a gun. It had been laying somewhere either under the floor of a barn or in the woods or something. But I had to do a lot of work to get it where it's at right now. I don't know if it'll ever be fired again, but it's going to look really good on somebody's shelf somewhere. So hold on a second and we'll look at it. All right, so everybody knows the New England Firearms 20 gauge partner. Now the wood on this was, I'm guessing this thing had been buried for years because the wood had a whole scale on top of it that had to be taken down. I finally got it down to some solid wood. We left it kind of rough, threw some really dark varnish on there. That wood was so dry, it soaked that color right in. Uh, so it still has that old 1800s shotgun look to it. So we're not going to do a whole lot more to that because we actually like the way it looks right there. As you can see, there is some pitting on the receiver, but actually it's all just surface. Everything internal looks good. It did take a rubber mallet and a lot of oil, but everything is functional now. I don't want to keep popping that firing pin, but it does work. So we're slowly getting that thing somewhere. And like I said, a lot of us probably, this was my first shotgun is one of these. Uh, the only thing is this was a 1993 model. And judging by the length of the stock, and it looks like the stock was cut factory. This was probably a youth model. And right now I'm working on the barrel. Now that's taking a lot of extra work because I want to go over this thing really good just to tell what kind of shape it's in. Now, like I said, I don't know if this thing would ever be good to shoot again, but I'm going to make it look as good as I can with what tools I have here. Uh, if nothing else, it'll look great sitting over somebody's fireplace. Uh, the, the four end, the four stock, as many of you remember on these, actually had a little swoop right here. Looked a little fancy. Well, that was so rotten right there that I had to cut it off and give it kind of just a contour. I think it turned out pretty good. Like I said, I think it goes right along with what we're going for. I'm not going to take all these dents out because that adds to the uh, patina on it, if you will. But another thing, these uh, Pittsburgh... These Pittsburgh pick and hook set were a lifesaver. I was able to take this and go right down in those areas where it had really fine lines that needed cleaned out. And also, I was able to take one of these, turn it sideways, and scrape a lot of the scaling off the outside. And it made the job a lot quicker. So these little things probably cost $3 at Harbor Freight. I strongly recommend them if you're going to be doing any kind of work on old rusty guns. All right, another thing that we did set up for this. See, I used a lot of rim oil. I had to soak this thing and let it sit for days at a time. Then just some gun blaster just to wash everything out. But I didn't want to sit and scrub the barrel here in my shop and get all that oil and crud everywhere. So I attached, I just made a little loop here with, a, with an old clamp and two drywall screws just to hold my vacuum. And this is just a shop vac. 
and I'm going to turn it on real quick just to show you what I'm using that for. So I kind of put the end of the barrel right in there. Turn that vacuum on. Run the brush down it. And all that dirt and crud just goes right into the vacuum. I don't have it on my floor. I don't have it on my table. I don't know. Not the most ingenious thing in the world, but it's just something that took me five minutes to throw together. Now I do have the outside of this vacuum. I have a piece of leather on here that comes out about a quarter inch past the tube. And that's because whenever I'm sanding stocks and I want to vacuum them off, I don't care about getting a little bit of dirt on there, but I don't want to gouge the wood with that plastic. And you know how that is. Sometimes you get going too fast and you'll start digging into stuff. So that's what that's for. So hopefully have some updates for you in the next few days. I've got some more muzzleloader projects going on. Uh, that's going to be going on probably for a long time because I have just reignited that love for the muzzleloaders, the side locks. Uh, I'm all in on that right now. The ammo went away for everything else. And I even made a video a while back about muzzleloaders for an SHTF situation. Well, now you can't find primers or powder for muzzleloaders either. So what do you do then? If you can't buy bullets, you can't find powder for your muzzleloaders, well, then you move over to your archery because there's always something else that you can be doing. That's just my little tip for today. And thank you all for uh, coming by. Like, subscribe, and uh, holler at me on there every once in a while. I like it when people comment uh, that I can remember. I've never had a real negative comment, and I believe that's because I try not to come off like I know a lot of stuff, because I really don't. I just make things up as I go, but that's part of life. So, y'all take care. You come back, and we'll talk again.